Okay, so thank you all so much for being here. My name is Mika Materovatnik and I graduated from Cornell University in December 2020. I am currently a post-baccalaureate fellow at the National Cancer Institute at the NIH. And today I'm very excited to be presenting my senior thesis work titled Genetic Variation in Female Control of Mating Plug Ejection in Drosophila melanogaster. So today we'll be talking about reproduction. During mating, it's not just sperm that's transferred from the male to the female, it's also seminal fluid proteins. And these have been shown to initiate behavioral and physiological post-mating effects on the female. In many insects and some mammals, a mating plug forms in the female reproductive tract soon after she starts to mate with a male. This mating plug is a coagulation of seminal fluid proteins. But what's the function of the mating plug? Well, its proposed functions are to prevent female remating by lowering her female receptivity to mating and to make it possible for females to store sperm. But what's interesting about the mating plug is that it's expelled by the female within about five hours of mating in a process called mating plug ejection. And as you might predict, the timing of mating plug ejection will greatly affect the male's reproductive success. Earlier ejection gives his sperm less time and less of a chance to be stored. What I'm showing you next is a stunning video uh, captured by the Kim lab showing this process of mating plug ejection. So if you watch the female, she'll be ejecting and there she goes. Just so you have an idea of what it looks like. So we also know that the female reproductive tract environment has important influences on post-copulatory processes like sperm competition outcomes. What we mean by sperm competition is when sperm from rival males compete for fertilization of the female's eggs. But it's important to recognize that it's not just sperm competition that plays a role in reproductive success. In multiply mated females, the timing of mating plug ejection influences the paternity share of her mates. So could mating plug ejection timing offer the female a way to manifest her preference over which sperm from the ejaculate from multiple males she will use to fertilize her eggs? This is called cryptic female choice. And so studying this phenomenon of mating plug ejection could give us insights into the mechanisms of cryptic female choice. In this project, we were interested in exploring this question, focusing on the female control of mating plug ejection. So we know very little of mating plug ejection, but what we do know is that it's genetically regulated. The Kim lab has shown that the diuretic hormone 44 neural circuit neurons influence mating plug ejection timing. Experimentally activating these neurons delays ejection while silencing these neurons expedites ejection. And so this is really interesting. And so the motivation for our project was to investigate whether there were other genes that might be involved in the pathway that affects mating plug ejection. And the tool that we used to do this was the Drosophila Genetic Reference Panel, or the DGRP. These are a collection of 192 wild-derived inbred lines. And on the DGRP website, we not only can find the genome sequence of all of these lines, but also a tabulation of all of the single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs, in these lines. What's a really powerful genetic pipeline is performing an association study between the SNPs across these lines and the variation in a specific phenotype. In this case, it's mating plug ejection timing. And so the, object, the objective of these association studies are to reveal a range of polymorphic variants that may contribute to variation in the phenotype that we're studying. So the first step in the study was to see if there even was variation across the DGRP. Now, we expected there to be some, given that other labs have shown variation in other phenotypes, um, but we didn't know just how much. And so to explore this variation, we performed mating plug ejection assays. And so I'm going to walk you through those. So for mating plug ejection assays, we put a DGRP virgin female in a vial with a, a Cantonese standard male, let them mate, then discarded the male, transferred the female to a mating plug ejection chamber, and observed the chamber until mating plug ejection occurred. Now, it's very fortuitous that one of the 
proteins in the sem in the in the mating plug ejection or sorry <laughs> in the mating plug um, actually fluoresces in the GFP range, and so it's very easy to quantify this process. Uh, what we use to observe this mating plug is a fluorescent uh, flashlight. Now, what I want to highlight about this specific assay is that it's used to elucidate the genetic variation in the female. So the only thing varying from assay to assay will be the uh, genotype of the female. So the results from these mating plug ejection assays show that there's an incredible variation in mating plug ejection timing across female genotypes. To orient you, on the y-axis, you'll see the mating plug ejection time in minutes, and on the x-axis, you'll see the randomly selected DGRP lines. The mean mating plug ejection time was approximately two hours and a half, and the DGRP lines tested had statistically significant differences in the mating plug ejection timing. So especially the between line variation was really encouraging to move on to the next step, which was to perform a genome-wide association study. However, one can't just perform a genome-wide association study without validating those findings. So the last step in the project was to validate those findings using RNA interference to knock down the candidate genes that came out of the genome-wide association study um, and see if they actually do have a role in mating plug ejection. So walking you through the results for, of the GWAS. So the results are normally illustrated by using a Manhattan plot. And you can see, and this is what you can see on the screen. So on the y-axis, you see the negative log base 10 of the p-value. On the x-axis are the Drosophila chromosomes. And each of the data points are, are single nucleotide polymorphisms. The height of the data point shows the strength of the association with mating plug ejection timing phenotype. The blue line shows a suggestive threshold uh, for the genome-wide association. Now, the fewest number of lines that we could use in order to perform a genome-wide association study was 30, uh, which is exactly the number that we used. Uh, I intended to do more. Um, I, I actually intended to do about 60, but um, due to the pandemic, I wasn't able to go into the lab for six months. Um, and so I could only get to the minimum number of lines. And so these are preliminary results. We have to assay at least 30 more in order to increase the power of the genome-wide association study. But we are still excited to see that there were some candidates that were just above the threshold, uh, suggesting certain gene classes that may be important. And so I did, instead of just looking at the two significant ones, given the power of the GWAS, I decided to look at the top 15 SNP associations. And so this table shows the most highly associated SNPs ranked by their test statistic, which reveal additional genes that might be worthwhile pursuing in the future. But I want to drive home one message today, um, which is from what I can tell, the nervous system has an influence on mating plug ejection timing. Two, out of the eight genes, octobeta 3 r and TROL show a very active role in the nervous system. But all eight genes, from what I can see from Fly Atlas, show some enrichment in the nervous system. Now, one particularly interesting gene, octobeta 3 r this is an octopamine receptor. Octopamine is a neuromodulator that has been shown to be very important in female reproduction, including in oogenesis and the release of sperm from storage, as well as in egg laying. And so from what we know of other octopamine receptors and this preliminary result, this may be taken together to say that octopinergic signaling may play an important role in the female's response to mating, including potentially post-copulatory post sexual selection. Now, the second gene that I want to highlight today is TROL. This is an extracellular matrix component that's involved in the generation of neurons. And so today, I showed you candidate genes that may have a role in the variation in mating plug ejection timing. However, it's necessary to assay at least 30 more lines in order to enabled the increasing of the power of the GWAS. And so the next step is to assay these 30 additional lines, repeat the analysis, and this is already a work in progress. Um, the current undergraduate who took on this project after I graduated is already assaying, so it's, that's very exciting. The, the second 
exciting next step is uh, the validation of the top hits from the GWAS. And so, as I said before, we'll be validating that using RNA interference to knock down those candidate genes and then seeing if that knockdown actually affects mating plug ejection timing. Third is to see if there's association between mating plug ejection timing and sperm competition outcomes. This would be a fascinating next step. And lastly, uh, it would be interesting to see if if um, if male genetic variation or also potential co-evolution within the DGRP lines uh, have an effect on mating plug ejection phenotype. And so with that, I wanted to acknowledge Mariana, Andy, and Dawn for mentoring me and inspiring me to continue to pursue important questions uh, through a career in research. I also wanted to thank Dr. Goldberg, uh, for being so kind as to let us use his fly room during the COVID semester. Also, I wanted to thank Rachel, uh, who is an undergraduate, uh, the undergraduate that I was talking about that has taken over this project since I graduated. And of course, the rest of the Wolfner Lab for their support, their encouragement, and their feedback. Uh, also, I wanted to thank my funding sources, uh, the Rawlings Residential Research Scholar Program, or CPRS, um, and the Cornell Dextra Undergraduate Grant. And with that, I want to thank you all so much for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. So great talk. The first question is, are the females in your SS met with males from their own population or with the lab control males? So the males, I can go back to that. The males were actually standard males. So the male genotype was kept constant um, from assay to assay. So it was a standard Cantonese male. The only uh, variable that varied was um, the female genotype. And that those were the DGRP females. So I want to follow up this question. Does the male genotype will affect the ejection time? Have any people studied this before? Yeah, so that's a really interesting question. And that was actually one of my next steps that would be fascinating to see. I think it is it is very likely that the male genotype will affect uh, the mating plug ejection time, um, but th that would be a completely different mm -hmm. assay. Well, not completely different assay, but one would just keep the female genotype constant and vary the male genotype, potentially using the DGRP males as um, in for the readings. Great. So the next question is, did the female that removed the mating plug uh, remat more quickly? So actually, in this study, we only looked at single matings. Um, so I don't know. Um, we didn't look at that in this study. So I think um, at least for this preliminary um, study, we're looking just at single matings and not multiple matings, but that would be very interesting to see how sort of a mating plug ejection might vary. That would be looking at um, the connection between mating plug ejection and sperm competition. So that would involve doing a, a more than one mating and seeing how the timing from the first a meeting to the second meeting a, could vary. So that's a very interesting question and um, we hope to be doing that in the future. So thank okay. you. So the last question, have you ever checked if eternal cementers after ejection time, e.g. E if the female is on the photo together with other fly, I mean other environment could you affect? So if there are any environment factor which will affect the ejection time, like the food is on, the female is on food or together with other female. Yeah, so given that we're studying a behavioral um, phenomenon, behavior is very sensitive to a number of things. Um, a talk with, I, I had with one of my mentors, Andy uh, Clark, so, I mean, he was saying that, I mean, the, this behavior is very sensitive. I mean, it can be for the, the food, the other females being around, it can be the humidity. And so we try to keep as many variables constant throughout. And so even if there is an effect um, of the environment, all of these ex experiments were done very similar time, same location, um, same 
person, at least for now. Um, and so even though these variables might affect it, it, it would have a systematic effect on all the data. And so hopefully that wouldn't affect it too much. But yes, they're very sensitive to these things. Um, and so it's important to consider that. Thank you for the question. Thank you. So there are other questions in Q&A and please answer when you have time.